So in this tutorial, we're going to build a simple one page app, which is going to be a lesson planner for teachers where they can type in what they want their lesson plan to be about and click generate and it will use ChatGPT to generate a lesson plan for them. So let's get into it. Hey everyone, this is Kieran, AKA No Code Life. Um, I'm just going to quickly show you how to integrate ChatGPT's API with your bubble app. Uh, you'll be pleased to know it's pretty easy to do and you can do some really cool things with it. So you probably already used ChatGPT in this web browser interface where you can uh, type in any kind of question or request and it will churn out a really nice answer like this. Like how do you integrate ChatGPT API with bubble.io and it gives you a very good answer there. So I suggest you also do that. Um, but it is also possible to access ChatGPT through uh, an API, which means that you can use it within your bubble app and you can add your own twist to it uh, or put in your own kind of use cases and just make it really useful, but within your app so people don't have to come out to this separate interface. Uh, and that's what we're going to do today. So the idea I had for a kind of demonstration is a lesson plan generator for teachers. So they will be able to type in here what they want their lesson to be about. They'll click generate and then it will output a lesson plan for them uh, and hopefully save them a bunch of time. So uh, the first thing you need to do is um, create an account on OpenAI. So platform.openai.com, uh, sign up, create an account, uh, and then we are going to need to create API keys. So if you go over to the top right corner and click view API keys, you will have here uh, a list of your API keys and you, you will, if this is your first time doing it, you won't have any there. So we're going to create a new secret key, but we won't do that quite yet uh, because first we need to set up the API call in our app. So go to your bubble plugins and search, uh, search for the API connector in the list. I already have one here and then click add another API and we're going to call it open AI. Um, and I actually already have one called OpenAI, so I'm going to call it OpenAI V2. Uh, and then instead of typing in um, all the details manually, which you can do, I'm just going to delete this kind of default API call that they give you. And I'm going to click import another call from curl. Uh, so what this means is um, a lot of API documentation will give you kind of a template which you can paste into here and click import. And then it will just set everything up within your API connector for you. So um, I definitely recommend doing that because it just saves uh, a lot of time uh, fiddling around. So if you go to the API reference within uh, platform.openai and go down to making requests, uh, and then you can copy this example they have here. See, it says curl, um, and it says the URL and a load of other details. So if I copy that, go back here and paste it, and click import. So that will create this API call for me and I can change the name of it. So I'm going to call this chat GPT completion. And you can use it either as data, uh, which means you'll be able to um, say in a, a text field, you'll be able to say get data from an external API and you'll be able to find it in the list there. Um, but I'm going to use it as action, which means I'll be able to uh, create a, a separate workflow action um, to be able to access this. So uh, you can do either or you can do you can do both if you want, uh, but it just depends on the user experience you want in your app. And then, so it's already put in this kind of default content type, which is what we want. Um, and then it's also got authorization and this is where you put your API key. So uh, I'm gonna go back over here and go back to the API section and click create new secret key and then copy that. And then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to paste that over the top. So you want to keep the word bearer and you want to keep a space uh, and then have your API key there. And I'm going to tick private on both of these because I don't want them to be visible or editable um, elsewhere within the app. So those are going to be static values that are not going to change. Then coming down here to uh, the body of the call. So this has put in some nicely formatted JSON uh, for us to edit. So um, the way the API works at the moment, 
this is where you can put the name of the model that you want to use. So at the moment, um, GPT-4 is out, but I don't have access to the API, so I'm going to use GPT-3.5 Turbo. But as, as soon as you have access to GPT-4 or 5 or 6, whatever is available when you watch this, then you can just replace the name of the model here, and that will allow you to access it. So if you want to understand a bit more about what these different um, things are, uh, you can come back into the API reference. And actually, the, the API reference is really well written, uh, and it's pretty easy to understand. So I definitely recommend doing that. Uh, but in here, you can see so a chat completion. Uh, you can see what it is. Given a chat conversation, the model will return a chat completion response, uh, and it tells you uh, what all the different variables are that you can you can enter in there. So um, we saw in the the template they gave us, it's uh, got role, user, and content. Um, so if you come over here, it tells you a bit more about what those things are. So essentially, um, there's different kinds of of roles that you can you can have. There's a, a system role, there's an assistant role, and then there's the user. So system is a prompt that you can give chat GPT to tell it what kind of um, person or artificial person you want it to be. So in this example, you could say uh, system prompt, you are a, a teacher at a top school. Uh, the user prompt is the thing that you're actually asking it. So it's the thing that you're going to be typing in there. And then assistant is what chat GPT is responding. So if you did want to make it so it was more of a conversational uh, interaction, then the response that ChatGPT gives each time will be the assistant role, and then uh, you will be replying as a user, and then it will be replying as a, an assistant, and you can feed all of those conversation items back into it each time so it remembers the previous things that were said in the conversation. Um, but in the case that we're using it, we are simply going to have one input, which is going to be the user input. And we're not going to use the system input because currently the API um, doesn't pay much attention to the system message. Uh, so actually, uh, OpenAI themselves said that it's better to put in um, any kind of instructions like that into the user prompt. So we are just going to use the user prompt. Uh, and then a couple of other things that might be interesting or useful. Temperature, uh, this is definitely worth knowing about. So it can be between 0 and 2. Higher values like 0.8 will make the output more random and lower values like 0.2 will make it more focused and deterministic. So if you want more interesting responses, you can definitely increase the value of this and it's worth playing around with it to get it to a point where you're happy with the responses that it's giving. Uh, and then the other one that I use is max tokens. So this just tells it um, how many tokens it should be using per response. Um, so you may want to limit this. The maximum is 4,000. Um, but you may want to limit this if you're finding that people are um, costing you a lot of money because they're asking for really long outputs from ChatGPT. So uh, we're going to copy this because the, the standard setup already has temperature in there. But we are also going to add uh, max tokens as well. And I'm going to put that as well. So I'm going to put that 4,000 to start with, but we're going to make these all dynamic. So to make these dynamic, um, which means you can input your own prompts into it, uh, we are going to remove this part, which is the prompt, and we're going to replace it with the word prompt like this uh, between these angled brackets. And we're going to do the same here for temperature and we're going to do the same here for max tokens so as you can see as you put these in um, as dynamic values uh, they appear below here as different variables that you can now edit so the next thing we need to do is to initialize the call so this means uh, essentially you, you test the call to make sure it's working and it will do an actual uh, post request to the API uh, to make sure it gets back a, a correct response. So we're going to put a test prompt in here. So I'm going to say, uh, tell me a joke. And then I'm going to give it a temperature of, let's say 0.8. And max tokens I'm going to put as 
uh, 4,000, which is the maximum value allowed. Uh, it's a good idea to just leave it as 4,000 while you're, you're testing and just look back and see how much your calls are costing um, because it may be that you don't want to, you don't need to limit this at all because they may not be costing much. Anyway, um, this GPT 3.5 Turbo is is already 10 times cheaper than the, the previous DaVinci models. So uh, you may find that you can just keep it at the max value there. Um, and we are going to remove private from all these because we want these to be um, dynamic. So to be able to access them from elsewhere within the app and make changes to them, you need to untick private. Uh, but we're, we're obviously leaving private ticked up here. And it's also good to tick allow blank. Um, if you don't do that, then if you happen to leave any of the fields blank when you're calling this API, um, it will feed in these test values, which you might not always want. Uh, and one final thing to note is when you're putting these numeric values in, um, if you look in the reference here, so let's see, when they have numeric values here, they do not have um, these quote marks around them. Um, but when they have a text value like a prompt, they do have the quote marks around them. Okay, so that's really important because if you get that wrong, then it just won't work. So I'm putting the quote marks around tell me a joke because that is going to be a text value here. Uh, and then I'm not putting it uh, any quote marks around these two values here. So if we click initialize call. So that's good. We're not getting an error here. It's come back with a response and Bubble is trying to kind of pass the response and, and guess what kind of values uh, they are. So this created um, is probably not a number. It's probably a Unix date. Uh, and then everything else, numbers, uh, that all looks right. So I'm going to save this. So now that this call has been initialized, that means we will be able to access this from within our app. So if we go back to our page here, so simple title, multi-line input, and a button. So let's start a workflow here. And we are going to have an action here, which is going to be, um, well, I'll show you. Let's go down here and go to plugins and open AI v2 chat GPT completion so that's the one we just created and as you can see here because those three uh, things we unticked the private boxes it's now giving us the option to set dynamic values here so for now I'm just going to um, kind of hard code in the temperature and the max tokens but you could have uh, you know a slider input on this page where you can the teacher can adjust the temperature value themselves and regenerate to see what impact it has. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to hard code those in. But the prompt is the part uh, where essentially we can add in whatever we want and, and make it our own. So I'm going to insert dynamic data and I'm going to use the arbitrary text uh, feature of Bubble, which essentially just means that you can type in uh, more stuff than you can fit into this field. So this is where we are really aiming to add value to our prompt, and this is where we're making it our own. So um, I'm not going to type anything revolutionary in here. I'm just going to say uh, you are a uh, you are an outstanding teacher at a prestigious school. Write a lesson plan on the subject of and then I'm going to insert dynamic data and I'm going to say multi-line input value. Uh, and then this is where you can, you know, you can add all kinds of stuff in here. So you could say the output must be in a certain format. Uh, you can say it should be this long. It should be written in the tone of such and such. Uh, you can put all your instructions in here. Uh, I'm just going to leave it as that for now. Um, because I can't think of anything else to write, but uh, this is what you need to play around with this prompt here, uh, because this is going to be the thing that really determines what you get out of the ChatGPT API. So I'm going to close that, and then I'm going to put uh, search for JSON safe. So I'm going to format it as JSON safe there. And so what that does is it will wrap the whole thing in quote marks. 
and it will also remove any characters which might confuse the API connector. Any characters that are not JSON safe, it will um, escape them, which means it will essentially write them in a different way so that it doesn't affect the API call. So that's really all you need to do. And then I'm going to say, um, I think I have a text box here. So I've got an empty text box here. I'm just going to call it text output. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put this within a group. Um, so just a row container and I'm going to call it group output. And I'm going to give that uh, a type of content text. So if you want to uh, kind of dynamically send data or display data in uh, a text box like this, if you put it within a group which has the type text, you can then send data to it. So I am now, as the second action, going to say display uh, display data in a group or pop-up. And the group is going to be group output. And the text is going to be result of step one. Uh, so this is the important bit, result of step one's choices, each item's message content. So although it sounds like a list, it's going to actually just going to be one thing. And then I'm going to say first item. So result of step one's choices, each item's message content, first item. Okay, and then I'm going to make this text output. I'm going to insert dynamic data and it's going to be equal to parent groups text. So it's going to be empty to start with, but then when uh, when this API call is finished and this might take uh, you know 10 or 20 th seconds, it is then going to display the data in the group output. Uh, and I might add a uh, loading. So I'm gonna I'm gonna make a custom state so I can at least say that it's loading. Uh, so let's um, add a custom state loading. And if you don't know what custom states are, um, they are just uh, very simple ways of storing kind of temporary data on the page. Uh, and they're very useful for things like when something's loading. So what I've done is I've clicked outside of the page here to to get the page inspector itself, which is where I always like to put my custom states. Click on I and you'll see this add new custom state option. So I've put in something called loading and I've made it a yes no field. And what I'm going to do is on this button here, I'm going to say when chat GPT, so that's the name of the page, when chat GPT is loading is yes, then I'm going to change this text to uh, please wait. And then I'm going to go on this workflow and at the start of the workflow, I'm going to set the state of chat GPT's loading to yes. And I'm just going to copy that and put it at the end. So when it finishes this workflow, I'm going to change it to no. So um, let's see what happens when we try this out. Uh, so a lesson about World War to and life in the trenches. Okay, and then we're going to click generate. It says please wait. So this part takes a little bit of time. So obviously it's a it's a good chance to uh, work on your your kind of loading screens or your animations to keep people interested. Uh, but if you imagine when you type into the Chat GPT interface on the website anyway, it always takes time because it's typing stuff out. So um, this is you know not unexpected. And there we have a lesson plan generated by ChatGPT. Uh, materials, introduction, direct instructions, guided practice, independent practice. So yeah, I'm not a teacher, but that looks pretty decent to me. And it looks like the kind of thing that might have taken a teacher half an hour to write. And we just did it in a few seconds. So uh, although, yeah, it's true, a teacher could just come over here and type in, give me a lesson plan for this. Um, the fact that you can kind of put it into your own app and make a different, perhaps better UI. You could save all the lesson plans and let the teacher uh, organize them and reuse them and uh, kind of make 
lesson plans based on previous ones but slightly altered uh, and you can you know you can add loads more value just by having an interface within your own app which is accessing the chat gpt api uh, and obviously when um, chat gpt 4 and 5 and 6 come out then everything is going to improve even further and you can continue to improve your own app so I hope that was a useful video. If you're interested in learning more about Bubble, uh, just check out the resources I have on my website, nocodelife.com. I've got a couple of courses. Uh, I've got an upcoming course teaching uh, Bubble for beginners, and I'm gonna put out plenty more content um, about using AI because I think it's uh, it's just so easy to use with no code that it's uh, it's kind of a no brainer.